Okay. 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 I mean, I'm going to a lot of extra efforts by recording these videos, making sure that I put a thing for each day. And it looks like you guys are doing what you're supposed to be doing, but please, I know it's difficult when you're at home on the day, you don't feel like working, but really it's only to your benefit that you stay on track. Okay, this is a very important section. Going forward, we're going to we're going to incorporate it into trig and next year into similarity and proportion as well. And we're not going to do this again. So it is very important that you use the time that you have now to stay on track. Okay, for 2.1, I think you did have to go in alphabetical order. So then many of your reasons will probably be similar to mine. It's fine if they're not exactly the same. You can ask me quickly if you had other reasons. For number two. But you had two circles and the line that they gave you, DE was actually tangent to both circles. So you could use tan chord theorem in both of them. I just want to show you quickly. Um, so for T, which was the first one that you had to find, all right, do we notice that T is an angle between the tangent and this chord? All right. Now this chord subtends a 54 degree angle at the circumference of the bigger triangle, circle, sorry, not triangle, circle. So T is 54 because of tan chord theorem. All right, so that is 54 degrees. Good evening. Oh, oh auditorium, okay, I was like, Mr. Brown is just. All right, then you need to find U over there. Now you're going to use tan chord theorem, but almost like the other way around in the small triangle, right? Because now we know that the angle between the tangent and the chord is 54, and that should be equal to the angle subtended at the circumference of the small circle as well, All right? Which is 54. So you could use tan chord theorem almost both ways around in the big triangle circle and then the small circle. Then for W, I just used. Angles on a oh, V, sorry, for V, I used angles on a straight line because it was over there. So U is 54, so V is then 126. For W, it was the same thing, right? Where you have the angle between the tangent and this chord, so that is equal to 80 degrees. And then if that is 80, then this one is also going to be 80 again because of tan chord. All right, so you could do it kind of on both sides there. For Y, I then again used angles on a straight line. And then for Z, I used angles on a triangle. You could have used angles on a straight line there as well for Z, because it was on that tangent. That would have been fine. <clears throat> Let me just write that in. But guys, in test or exams, they usually ask it like in question four, where each question is asking for specific angles. So you don't have to even worry about which angle must be find first. They usually break it down like they did in four. Okay, for 2.2 and 2.3, they just asked if the lines are parallel. So in both, oh, sorry, in the first one, they were not parallel, D, E, and B, A. I just want to show you quickly. So DE is the tangent. They're asking, is this tangent parallel to BA? Now on the picture, obviously it looks like they're not, but we can't just go on that, all right? We have to prove that they're not parallel or parallel. So what I did was I just looked at this Z shape, for example, all right? If they were parallel, then these two angles would be equal, the alternate angles, all right? Same thing over there with A and what is that? A, C, E, all right? That's also... 54 and that would also be 80. So again, those are not equal. So you could have written either one of those two pairs. I wrote A, B, C, so angle B, which was 80 degrees, and then B, C, D, that bottom one at the tangent, which was 54. So they're not equal. 
So therefore the lines are not parallel. And that is your reason, guys, alt angles not equal. <clears throat> then for 2.3, they asked about BA and FG. Sorry. BA and FG. So those two, BA and FG, now they also do look like they are actually parallel, but if you look at the information that we have, we can prove that they are. So I think I did corresponding angles because that was 54 and that was also 54. And on the other side, it's the same. That was 80, that was also 80, all right? So the F shape we're looking at for this one. So if those corresponding angles are equal, then the lines are parallel. But guys, you also could have done co-interior angles, all right? The C shape, if you wanted to, that was 80 and that was 100. We had to calculate Y as well. So those two add up to 180. And remember, co-interior angles, if they lie between parallel lines, add up to 180. And it's the same with these two. They also add up to 180. Okay, so yeah, I did corresponding angles, but co-interior angles would have been fine as well. So ABC is 80 and GFC is 80, or you could have worked with the 254 degree angles. That also would have been fine. So they are equal. So BA is parallel to FG. Okay, any questions on number two, guys? How are we feeling about the tangent stuff? Is it okay? All right, because we're basically done with all the content. We must still just do some proofs. But from now on, every day, we're just going to practice more and more examples with all the stuff put together. Okay, so hopefully by the end of the week, you guys will be fine with this. All right, so there we have 4.1 to 4.7. Again, it's okay if your steps are different from mine, if you have different reasons, maybe just, you can just ask me. So in this one, they asked you to find the angles, the specific angle every time. So for 4.1, I actually just want to show you what I did. I don't know, as I was doing it, I was thinking, I'm sure there's a faster way of doing it, but I'll just show you. And if any of you found a quicker way of finding E4, that's fine, you can tell me. All right, so for 4.1, they're asking us to find E4. They said that KEF, so this whole angle, right, is 35 degrees. The picture is a bit misleading because it looks like it's the angle between the, the chord and the circle, but guys, that can't actually be a thing because that's not like, I don't know, because it's like a curve, All right? So in the, in the wording, they did say KEF is 35, so that's 35. OHG, OHG, where's G now? Oh, there, sorry. OHG is 31, All right? So we have 31 degrees there. And EK is equal to HK, All right? They put that in on the picture. Determine E4. Now, if they had put mark annotations on the side, it would be a bit easier to see kind of how much working you have to do for each one, all right? Obviously, that will be the case in the test or exam. But what I did for E4 was I said, I used tan chord theorem. Oh, they, oh, they did tell us that DF is a tangent. All right, so I used tan chord theorem here. So I said this angle between the tangent and the chord is equal to that angle subtended by the chord. All right, so K, so H3 is 35. And then I used equal chords, equal angles, but you actually could have used angles opposite equal sides as well. That would have been fine. All right, to get to 35 degrees there. All right, are we understanding the angles opposite equal sides? You probably would have seen that faster or easier. But I said, because this chord is equal to that chord, they subtend equal angles. Yes, Robin? That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> then after that, for all of them, it was just a one step thing that I could see except for 4.7, where you have to actually do two steps. I don't know if any of you guys found the one step way of finding 4.7. <clears throat> All right, for 4.2 angle K was just the third angle in that isosceles triangle that we just worked with. And guys, remember, you don't have to write the name of the triangle in your reason. I just sometimes do it so that I'm, I can kind of keep track of what I'm working with, but you won't lose a mark if it's not there. Okay, you can just say angle sum and triangle, that's perfect. So you had 35 and 35, so that's 70. So K must be 110. Then DEH 
was I used tan chord theorem to get that one, or you could have used angles on a straight line. All right, let me just quickly show you. So now when we calculated angle K is 110, right? Now we need to find DEH, which is this whole angle over there, right? Do we see that it is an angle between the tangent and chord EH? So this must be equal to the angle subtended by EH on the other side of the, the chord, right? Which is 110. Or like I said already, you had 35 and 35. So you know that these two angles together are 70. So this must then be 110 because of angles on a straight line. That also would have been fine. Yes, Robin? Yes, Mm -hmm. And then between the other side, it's nice to be as well. That's fine. Mm. Perfect. Yeah. Any other things that you say for 4.3? Is that fine? <clears throat> okay, 4.4, they wanted angle G. And that was a nice and easy one, I think, because we have 110 there. Do we notice this cyclic quad? Right. So 110, so that means that G has to be 70 degrees, opposite angles of a cyclic quad. Or you could have worked with tan chord theorem with that angle there, right? Are we seeing that 70 degree angle? Because it's 35 and 35. The angle between the tangent and chord EH. So that must be equal to the angle subtended by EH on the other side of the chord. All right, so you could have said tan chord theorem for G as well. Let's add that in. Okay, then for 01, I used angle at center. Yes? That's fine. Okay, that's fine. Yes, you could have done that. All right, then 4.5, I just used angle at center because we had the 70. So the one, but you could have used other methods. So you could have used angles opposite equal sides and, and angle sum and triangle. If you had the 20 and the 20, that also would have worked, right? <clears throat> 4.6, OED, that was the 90 degree angle because of the tangent being perpendicular to the radius. All right, 4.6. Then for H2, oh, so some of you guys found H2 already in the previous, in some of the previous questions, but, oh, sorry, you actually had to find E1, my bad. All right, so if you found H2 previously and you realize now you need to use it, you could just say from above or whatever, or you could just use it again. So what are we trying to find here now? Sorry, I forgot, E1. Okay, we need to try and find E1. So what I did was I calculated H2 doing angle sum and triangle, all right? Because I know that this is 140. So those two must both be equal to 20 degrees. Okay, now some of you already had this 20 from previous questions then you could just use it straight away. Then what did I do from there? Tan chord. So then I said that E1, now it is very busy. So let's just see if we can figure out. E1 is between this tangent and EG, right? Do we notice that? The angle between the tangent and chord EG and chord EG subtends that angle at the circumference, which is made up of 20 and 31 degrees. Okay, so that is why E1 will have to be 51 degrees because of tan chord theorem. Yes? Mm -hmm. From 90, that's fine. <clears throat> so guys, in a test or exam, oh, sorry, let me just put the answer back up. In a test or exam, you can really rely on the mark allegation to kind of guide you in terms of how complicated the question could be, all right? Or if it's maybe, if it's a two mark question, then that's normally a one liner. Okay, one mark for the answer, one mark for the reason. But if it's three, four, maybe even five marks, then you might have to do an in-between step, might have to show multiple reasons. Okay, so that's something that can help you 
if you see it's only two marks, then you can know immediately, okay, there is actually like a one step way of finding this. But then if you use multiple steps to get to the answer, I mean, you're not gonna lose marks for writing down more steps. Okay, so don't worry about that. It's just a bit of an indication of how complicated the question is, I suppose. Okay, any questions on this number four? All right, guys, I want us to look at some proofs. Now, I decided to not print the proofs for you because I actually want you to take some time to write them down, all right, to copy them into your books. Because I think if we just read them, we're not actually going to remember them. Okay, so they are written out here. And I am going to just talk through them. Now, these are proofs from last year, but you actually only did two of the three, but the third one, the extra one, is very similar to the first one. Okay, so we're going to talk about that now. But maybe just write down proofs or write down grade 10 proofs. How's that? Okay, grade 10 proofs. And then this is for theorem one. So just write down the theorem and draw that picture, please. Sorry that I'm not going to really draw it now. I'm feeling a bit lazy today. <laughs> <clears throat> Yes. And now, guys, you can actually copy it down quickly. I'll give you a few minutes and then I'm going to um, just run through it, explain it. But the first two are actually quite simple ones. Okay, they're quite easy to understand. <clears throat>
All right, guys, I think some of you are still busy copying down, but most of you seem like you're done. So let's quickly just go through this. Now, guys, a proof is literally asked in a very specific way. Okay, you won't have to think, oh, I'm supposed to prove this now. They literally say, prove the theorem that states. And then they'll write the actual theorem down. Okay. They will give you the picture without the dotted lines. All right, the dotted lines, you must remember that you have to construct those. So just make sure that you maybe highlight them or do them in a different color or something. Okay, so they'll give you the picture, the circle. They'll give you a line from the center that is perpendicular to a chord. All right, and that will also be written down in the given part. That's literally what they give you. Okay. <clears throat> Now guys, if we are proving the theorem that says that a line drawn from the center of a circle perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord, that is the part that we are supposed to prove. Okay, the first part is what they're giving us, but the actual like result of the theorem in a sense, that is what we need to prove. So we need to prove that this line cuts this chord in half. So it doesn't make sense that we have to prove that AM is equal to BM. All right, RTP, you might have to fill that in, they might give you that. Okay, so this possibly 
you need to fill in, or they might give you that. And guys, also they can give you different letters. Okay, it won't always necessarily be O, M, A, and B. They can give you different letters. Then obviously you need to be able to adjust the proof based on that. The construction is something that you are going to have to write down and possibly fill in on the diagram. Okay, so if they've given you the diagram like on an answer sheet, then you're gonna have to fill it in and you're gonna have to write down what you are constructing. Now guys, basically what we're constructing, like I said, it might be different letters, but we are creating two triangles there, two right angle triangles. Okay, we're filling in the two radii, we're drawing them in. That's what you're always gonna have to do. Even in the next proof as well, we're gonna do exactly the same construction. Now, <clears throat> sorry, in order to prove that these two are equal, we're going to prove that these two triangles are congruent, okay, which is this whole thing. I don't know if you can still remember how to do that. You haven't done it since grade nine, but you're going to write in triangle OMA and OMB, all right, whatever the two triangles are in your, tri in your picture. Then you're going to say that angle is equal to that angle, all right? It's given that this line is perpendicular to the chord. So they are basically telling you that those two angles are both equal to 90 degrees. So that's the first thing, all right? Then OA and OB, the lines that you constructed, those are equal because they are both radii, right? And we know that radii are always equal. So that's the second one. Then OM, whatever the line from the center to the chord is, that line is common because it's a side of both of the two triangles. So therefore, do you guys remember you have four cases of congruency? It's side, 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 angle, side, angle, angle, side, and right angle hypotenuse side, which is the one that we're using here. All right, so then you're gonna say OMA is congruent to OMB. Remember that order is important. Okay, you have to use the same order for congruency. RHS, right angle hypotenuse side. Now guys, if two triangles are congruent, they are absolutely identical, all right? So if this triangle is congruent to that triangle, then those two sides have to be equal. And there you are proving what you are required to prove. Yes. Yeah, the wording that they use is normally prove the theorem that states, and then they'll put this like in quotation marks. Mm. It's normally on like an answer sheet. So they usually give you the circle and they give you like lines that you have to fill in. So they'll say, given this, then they might say RTP, and there will be like a dotted line. You have to fill it in. And then they'll say construction, you have to fill it in, draw it on the picture. Okay, sometimes guys, it depends on how many marks they want this to count. Sometimes they leave this whole thing blank. Sometimes they write some of it down and you have to fill in like the reasons or maybe the steps or just like, it's almost like a fill in the blank type of thing sometimes. Yes. Yes, you do. You write it in and you show it on the picture. Yeah, which is why I did a little arrow there. Okay, guys, does that make sense? Now the second one is the converse of theorem one. This was theorem one, right? Line from the center of the circle perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord. Converse of theorem one is, so this is number two, sorry, I just can't fit it in, so that's the second one. A line drawn from the center of a circle to the midpoint of a chord, but is, sorry, is perpendicular to the chord. So I see these lines are not in the right space. There you go, they're supposed to be there. That's the converse of theorem one, right? So now guys, your proof is actually very much the same. In this case, it's just given that this chord or this line, sorry, cuts this chord in half. So for this one, we know that AM is equal to NB. We have our radii that are equal and we have our common side. So in this case, we're gonna prove congruency using side, side, side. Okay, but it's the same construction. We're again drawing in the two radii. We're proving congruency of these two triangles. It's now just side, side, side. And then you're going to say, if this triangle is congruent to that one, it means that this angle has to be equal to that angle. And because they're on a straight line, right? They must add up to 180. So they must both be equal to 90 degrees. Okay, and in saying that, you've proven that OM, this line is perpendicular to that chord. 
Okay, so just write that down, please. It's very much the same as the previous one. And this is the extra one, guys. This is the one that you wouldn't have done last year. But do you see what I mean? It's, it's basically the same as the previous one. Okay, just copy that down quickly, please. Just those dots in the angles are not given, so don't copy those dots down and you just erase them. Hey guys, I was going to do the third one now, but I think that's enough for today. I'm going to give you some time to work in class. All right, so that will be your homework for tomorrow with your mark. And tomorrow I'm going to do the third straight king theorem, which was angle at center. I'll do that proof with the other group. All right, and we'll mark this. And we're going to just, I'm just going to give them some more questions to practice. Okay. So we're basically done learning content except for the proofs. We're just going to do one proof per day, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and then we're done with everything by the end of Thursday. All right. <clears throat> so that will be our homework for tomorrow, guys. Numbers eight and nine. Number eight is again a question working with values, and then number nine is a question working with x's. Yeah. No, so the, the next one is angle at center, which we were supposed to do last year. And then we're doing two grade 11 proofs, which is the opposite angles of cyclic quad and pan chord theorem. So I'll do opposite angles of cyclic quad with you guys on Wednesday. And the pan chord one and angle between the video Yes. Well, only angle at center, pan chord I'll do on Thursday. So that will be on the video. Yeah. It's going to do one per day. I don't want to overwhelm people. <laughs> 